Hi, Randy the Mobile Home Guy here today. Today we're going to talk about how to replace a motor in a swamp cooler. Um, these motors, um, they're on a belt and a pulley system a lot of times. Um, so this is the one that we're going to go over today. Um, we're going to pull this guy off and we're going to look at how to do that. Okay, first thing you want to do to make sure is that we have the power disconnected, of course. So, um, this one is nice in that it has a little plug right here. Um, but we do want to make sure that that is either unplugged or the breaker has been turned off. Make sure the power is off. Um, and then uh, move on to the next step. Um, what I like to do here is get the pulley off. So we'll just kind of pull the pulley in one direction like this. As we pull it away, it'll come off there. And then what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to get these little clamps off right here. So if we look at these clamps, they have this little bracket right here. So if we loosen this screw right here, we got to probably sometimes hold the nut on the back side. If we loosen that, um, these will come off. Don't take it all the way off, but kind of just loosen it really good. Okay, and then again this side here. We'll look at that. So nut on this side, unscrew there. Almost all the way off, but not off. Okay, so you can see how we've loosened the nut here. And now this basically comes off and it's, when it gets tight, it tightens on there. When it loosens down, it kind of lets go. So you just kind of take this off. And again, we didn't take them off, so we're not going to lose anything. We're just going to put this one to the side. Same thing with this one here. Just kind of take that off. And then this will lift out of its bracket. See how it just sits in this little bracket right here? But we're going to go over in case you don't have just a quick uh, plug like this one here does. If you don't have that, what we're going to want to do is we're going to, see we can move this now. We can move this so that this is this little plate here is what you're looking for. It's on with two screws. And we're going to want to remove this plate, of course, making sure the power's off. This makes, we'll remove these, uh, loosen one of these screws. We're going to uh, take this one here out and loosen that one. Okay, and we're going to uh, um, take this plate off and we're going to look inside of there. Okay, so we've loosened these two nuts here, making sure the power is off. Okay, and this is only if you don't have this plug that's convenient. Sometimes they're hardwired in. So we've loosened these two here and we can see that we can kind of get this plate off. And this here is what it looks like inside. These spades uh, just pull right off most of the time. These little wires right off of the spades and then the ground wire, you'll have to unscrew that all the way and pull this piece out, keeping track of where they go. You can see um, uh, that the white is common. Most often times black is high and then red is low, okay? Okay, with this now in our lap here, we're looking at the wiring situation. We've loosened this screw here, so we can kind of pull that off to the side there. And so these we can just pull right off of there. These little spades, you can see that those come right off. And of course, we're going to want to save this plug to use for the new motor. We'll just set that to the side and be ready. So just keeping track of what we did there. Usually red is low and black is high, but not always, so just triple check that. Okay, next we want to save the pulley here. So we want to be able to get this off and we can see that that has a little Allen wrench there. So we're going to use an Allen wrench and loosen that up. Hopefully it comes right off. Sometimes I suggest buying a new pulley because you can't get this off really well. So sometimes it's impossible to get off and having that pulley that maybe you can return to the store if you don't use it, but just to have it, I suggest taking that with you. Okay, so we have loosened the nut. It's a 532 Allen wrench most of the time. And uh, we have been able to get this uh, pulley off here. You wanna save these if you can, if it's in good shape. Um, you can see that there's two Allen wrenches on there. Um, one is for to change the diameter of this gap, which changes the speed. So you wanna check your uh, manufacturing things for uh, how wide that should be. Um, so you try to stay with what you had before. If you have the same motor, try to have the same gap. That's why it's great if you can get these off. Um, sometimes you can uh, kind of hold this really tight and hammer just the center of that out. Um, sometimes that ruins the shaft, but we don't care because it's a bad motor. So uh, there's a, a motor. I use this little tool here to get mine off. I use this thing and I've had it in my uh, video a few times. I should get paid for advertising this thing, but it great works great. Um, there's a few little fittings with that. It kind of pops them right off. But uh, hitting it with a hammer in the center with a little die in the center, um, kind of hold that pulley, hit in the center, not in the edges of that shaft, otherwise it'll be impossible to get out. Sometimes works. A lot of penetrating oil I haven't found works real well on these things, but uh, uh, good luck getting that off and uh, saving that, but uh, hopefully you can. 
Okay, we have the new motor here. We're just going to loosen these two up again, and you can see that just moves up, lifts out a little bit and pulls out. And you can see inside there, basically exact same thing we just had. So we're just gonna do exactly opposite of what we did to get it off. Okay, so it is really actually as simple as all that. So you can see right here, there's two little spots to, uh, two little spots to put the wire through. So the plate will go on, so we're gonna put it like there. We can see what we've done here. We just put the spades right back on where they go, where they've gone before there. So ready to go. Make sure they're nice and tight. Sometimes they'll loosen up. You just kind of squeeze them once you're on there with a little pair of needle nose pliers to kind of make them so they don't slide right off. So we'll put this piece right there like that. And then if we've done our job correctly, this thing will go right back on there in place and fit right back on there. Sometimes you have to loosen these screws up a little bit. Like here. Loosen those up and put this in there. Slide it over. Just enough to grab that other screw. Simple as that, huh? Let's loosen that up a tiny bit more. Okay, push down and tighten them up. Okay, so now we've got this uh, the plug back on it, um, uh, and we want to set the uh, the motor right back down and where it goes. And you can see that that little piece right there fits inside of the grooves on the motor. Okay, and once you tighten that down, that'll be that'll work just great. And then uh, so same thing on both sides. Make sure those are in line with this little groove right there. Make sure that metal piece is on there, and you and you have them with this rubber grommet right there that's in place. Okay, and sometimes on these motors, make sure yours doesn't. Uh, It'll have like a, it'll say this side up or something to that effect and there'll be a little oil spout right here. Make sure if there was an oil spout that that faces at least above level. So you wouldn't want it like right here where if you did oil it, water could come down here. You'd want it up so water flow, I'm sorry, oil flows right in there. So make sure that's that way. Okay, so you can see we put the bracket on here. Um, so sometimes if it's being a bear, it can't get on there. I like to make sure that the nut is all the way at the end of the bolt there. That kind of helps and gives us about as wide a space as we can. And then we're just gonna tighten this down. Um, you'll know it's really tight when you can't move the motor. See, like right now I could move the motor pretty straightforward. We're not gonna uh, do it all the way. You don't have to tighten those all the way down, but make sure it's good and solid and not movable. Okay, so now we're going to put on the pulley, and we can see that there's a flat part on the shaft of the motor. Um, we're going to want to make sure that the bolt that holds it on there, on the, the pulley onto the shaft, is on that flat side. Another very important um, thing we're going to want to make sure is that this pulley up here lines up with that pulley down there. So basically we want to be straight up and down with that. So when you're looking straight at it, then we want that to go straight up and down, not kind of crooked so that the belt runs crooked, okay? And then we're going to tighten it on. We're going to get that really pretty cinched down pretty tight there. And we don't want to let that loosen up on us. Okay, and once that's on there nice and tight, we're going to want to put the belt on there. So what I do is I'll start at the top. I'll put the belt on there like that and then I'll come down to the bottom here pull it tight and I'll get it on the wheel and then I'll spin the wheel now these things shouldn't be so tight that you can't even get them to turn so there needs to be they say um, an inch and a half of play there some of them are different but uh, we want to be able to push that with about five pounds of pressure about an inch and a half okay and what we can do we can uh, if this is really super tight or really super loose there we can uh, on the other side of the swamp cooler there's another one of these uh, nuts right here we're gonna loosen that a little bit and loosen this a little bit sometimes I'll put a little pry bar right here and lift the motor like right here lift the motor up cut it tight where I want and then I'll tighten this back down so this right here will loosen in this bracket to go up and down and tighten this belt that's what those are for there okay there we go one more installed swamp cooler motor really super straightforward I would say tackling this isn't going to be too hard for you um, just follow the steps it's almost like kind of reverse engineering take it off just like you put it back on uh, Okay, so here we go. One more swamp cooler motor installed. Uh, something you could tackle. Uh, really, it's just kind of almost like reverse engineering. You just put it back on just like you took it off and uh, pretty straightforward. Just uh, get a little intimidated by the wiring. Make sure power's off of the box. Unplug those kinds of things uh, and just uh, take some pictures as you go. Maybe that'll help you keep from uh, getting those final 
wiring cross there. So pretty straightforward and you could do it. I just want to look over with you how to wire a swamp cooler. Um, there's a little bit of confusion because there's just so many wires. So I want to show you a little bit, kind of a little bit deeper into um, the hookup here. So really what this is, is we can see back there wires coming through and there should be five of those wires. So there should be uh, a low speed, a high speed, a pump, a common, and a ground. And we do have all those if we look. So if we look, here's the ground wire coming out of there. Okay. And here is the common wire coming out of here. Okay. Here's the fan wire. And here's a high and a low. So if you look though, it looks like there's two black wires, uh, a, a, a regular bare wire, a white wire. So how do we figure that out? So what we want to do is we want to find where our common one is. So we can hook everything, everything needs to be hooked to the same common in this power source, this 110 power source. So um, the pump here hooks to the common and the same common the same wire from the from the motor which is common goes to the same common from the power source down below so we need to find that so what we would do is we'd alienate on the switch those settings so we wouldn't do the cool settings at all we would do the vent settings and the pump only so if we turn it to pump only power is going to come through the common and through the the wire leading from the switch for the fan okay and if we turn it to high vent it's going to again come to the common and to the high wire so if we put our tester say well, a lot of times it's white but not always we put it on the white wire and then we put it on all these say we turn it to um, high vent we put it on a, one of the wires and we test all the wires with the other side. Okay, that one wasn't anything. So we push here, okay, which, where are we getting power? Okay, and then we move the switch down below to say low vent. And then again, we find where those two wires we had power and then we use say it was okay, up oh, now we lost power. It must be here, up oh, now we have power to a different wire. That one must be the common. Okay, then we switch it to those all those settings at a time. Now we know common, so we go common and then we go pump only up oh, that one has power okay then we go make sure none of the other ones have power nope just these two so that one means this is common and this would be pump and then we do uh, low and then we say low vent so up oh, that one has power no power no power so this is the common this is the low vent then again with the high vent okay and of course the ground should hopefully be obvious okay hopefully that helps a little bit